whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of organization. What's good, YouTube? I'm Andrew, and welcome to 3DIY. Today, we're gonna be making a DIY Thor's hammer pencil holder. All right, first off, we're gonna need some references. I don't actually have a perfect mental image of what Thor's hammer looks like, so I'm gonna need a perfect photo image from Google. First up, I got references from Mjolnir, and I opened up Blender. I thought I would use the rock that Thor's hammer was lodged in in the first Thor movie as kind of the base for my pencil holder. The rock I kind of made out of this cube that I deformed a whole bunch until it sort of looked like a rock, or maybe Grimer, Oh no, no, that's, that's onyx. That's definitely onyx. But onyx is a rock type, so I'm counting that as a win. For the head of the hammer, I started off with a cube. Noticing a pattern here with cubes. Anyway, I took the cube and I stretched it into a longer rectangle, approximately the shape and size of the rectangular portion of Thor's hammer, and then took the short sides and extruded and scaled them so it had that kind of beveled look like the edges of Thor's hammer has. Once that was done, I beveled all of the edges to give it that rounded look like Thor's hammer has. Okay, now to take a stab at these engravings around the sides of the hammer. Frankly, this sort of fine detail is way the f out of my league, but uh, I guess I'll try anyway. For my first attempt, I tried subdividing one of the faces a bunch of times into a bunch of smaller little faces, and then I thought maybe I would make the detail out of that somehow. I don't know what the f I was thinking, don't ask. I'm gonna try again, deleting this. Okay, for my next attempt, and this one admittedly looked a lot better than whatever the fuck I was trying before, I took these curves and then I kind of made them into these sort of squiggly shapes and duplicated it into a sort of double helix pattern and then extruded it out into a tube. And then I duplicated that a bunch of times and kind of looks okay. Let's try this. Okay, so this is where things kind of got a little messy. I tried to merge all of my curves into one object so I could cut it out of the face of the hammer but the geometry got all fucked up in a way I don't really understand and it wouldn't cut out properly. So I'm gonna have to scrap this and try something else. All right, so for the third attempt, I thought I'd try something with a little bit more of a high probability of merging properly. I'm gonna take these donuts and kind of arrange them into sort of an Audi logo pattern. All right, now that the pattern's done, I'm gonna merge it with this stamp I made, which is just slightly smaller than one of these edges. So it'll create this sort of embossed effect around the edge. Once I had the stamp, I lined it up with the first face and cut it out. Then I just rotated and repositioned the stamp all around the other faces until I finally had everything cut out. And voila, that actually looks pretty fucking good. At this point, I wanted to make sure that the hammer fit on the rock properly. So I scaled and rotated it until it was approximately embedded in the rock the way I liked it. Then I made a copy of the hammer, scaled it up ever so slightly, and used that to cut the shape out of the rock so that the real hammer would fit perfectly once everything was printed out. For the handle, I just took a simple cylinder and stretched it out into the right shape and size. For the pommel, I took a really small stubby cylinder and then just kind of extruded and warped it a little bit. You can see what I'm doing here, right? And then it kind of looked like the right shape. All right, next I cut a cylinder out of the pommel and then scaled it up so that there was a lot of extra space between the pommel and the handle, and that'll leave me room later for when I want to wrap it with leather. So since this thing is supposed to be a pencil holder, I'm gonna to need to cut out some space in the top of the hammer where those pencils are gonna go in. I basically divided the surface into eight different compartments and then cut those rectangles out to leave cavities for where the pencils are gonna go in. All right, now I have to attach the handle somehow because it's not just gonna sit on top of this little cross section, that would be stupid. I took a cylinder that was a little bit wider than the handle, and I put that through to the bottom of the hammer so that it would have something to sit on. All right, the last detail I need is the inscription. Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. For some reason, I wasn't happy just trying to figure out how to get Blender to load the font I wanted, so I thought that it would be easier. <laughs> it wasn't. To go through Illustrator and export the text that way. Basically, long story short, that sh didn't work out the way I wanted it to, and I ended up figuring out how to do it in Blender anyway. So once I got the text I wanted, I extruded it, cut it out of the surface of the hammer, and bingo, fucking done. Time to print. Cue the printing montage. Okay, let's print this. Ah, oh, f the handle is way too tall. How did I think that this would even work? Okay, I guess I'll have to separate the handle. Let's go back and model this sh All right, so I separated the handle into a separate part, and then I spent just 
an embarrassing amount of time trying to make the geometry of this inner circle section fit so I could print it properly and have the handle fit in. This is brutal. Can someone fast forward this shit? No one needs to watch this mess. Okay, done. Yeah, yeah, that worked out perfectly. Just like I intended. Finally, let's print. Wait a minute, what the fuck is this? Why is there just the handle and this weird spirited away soot spray shit going on on my print head? Uh, that's not quite right. Let me, let me investigate. Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay, so only part of the model is actually sitting on the print bed. The rest of this shit is just kind of floating a good half an inch above it. I'm, I'm gonna fix that and try again. All right, now that I fixed that, let's print this shit. Wait, no, fuck. oh, this is peeling up. That's not working at all. Okay, yeah, the settings on the printer are still set up for PLA. Uh, this is ABS. I'll be right back. I need to hit, heat the print bed more. I think I probably fucked this up one more time, but I don't seem to have any footage of it. So uh, let's pretend that didn't happen. Nice, now for real. Cue the printing montage. Man, this rock is fucking hard to pull off the print bed. Fuck, if the rock was that hard, I'd hope I'm worthy to pull off the hammer. Don't wanna brag, but that was pretty easy. The bottom of the hammer kinda lifted up a bit, and same with the rock, but I'm not overly concerned, it still looks pretty good. The only other detail that didn't really work out so well is this uh, inscription on the bottom face of the hammer. It kinda didn't have enough support under it. I didn't wanna use supports for this whole thing just for the bottom, so eh, I'll just leave it, it's fine. After a quick test fit to make sure that all of these parts fit together the way I intended them to, it's time to paint. First, I mixed some light gray acrylic paint and just used a sponge brush very lightly across the surface of the hammer to get a sort of brushed metal effect without covering the black in the details that I wanted to keep dark, like inside the inscription and the engraved details on the edges. Oh, I actually forgot to cut off all this fucked up material on the bottom. Painting this is actually gonna make it look way worse. Whatever, it's on the bottom, fuck it. And I'll go over the pommel with the same light gray acrylic paint. For the rock, I mixed a light brown color in acrylic paint and used a normal brush to give it all an even coating. After the paint was dry, I mixed a lighter color to use for the highlights. I used a dry paper towel and got just the slightest bit of paint on it and dabbed that on in the highest points to add some highlights. Andrew, you're messing up the highlights. I can't even watch you do this right now. So when you're applying the highlights, make sure that you always brush downwards and only touch the places where the sun would hit on the object that you're painting. Okay, uh, thanks, Julie. Not sure I asked for your help, but it looks pretty good, so what the f***? All right, now that all the painting is done, I thought I would make the handle look super legit by wrapping it in some leather that I dissected from this old wallet. You can use whatever kind of fabric you have lying around for this, but an old wallet worked out really well for me. I cut a couple of strips off of the leather, and then I'd spent way too long fiddling around with the handle and the leather trying to figure out the best way to wrap them both. I ended up settling on wrapping one around first and then filling the gap with the other one. I thought it gave it a cool texture. Okay, let's glue this shit down. So I just need to get a little bit of super glue right here and f it, it's on my hand. Julie, how do you get super glue off of your hand? Okay, now that the super glue is um, removed and not totally still on my hand, let's move on. Aside from getting super glue on my hand, this part was actually pretty easy. All I did was wrap the strip of leather slowly around the handle, adding a little bit of super glue along the way. Admittedly, I didn't quite use enough glue. You should probably do it in more points along the leather than I did. But I was terrified of super glue at this point, so I used about as little as possible. All right, now I've got something that looks kind of like a leather Chinese finger trap. I'm gonna trim off this excess leather so the edges are flat. My cat Gideon thought that this part was actually really interesting. I'm not sure why, but you know, nice to have the company. When I went to go test fit the handle into the base of the hammer, I realized I forgot to account for space for the handle to fit into the base of the hammer, so I had to trim off a little ring of leather from the bottom. Okay, now all I have to do is glue this together. That should be easy, right? No. It should be easy. That's true. First, I applied a small amount of super glue and used that to stick the handle in. And as I was holding it down, I was kind of wobbly. And I think that that led the glue to not adhere properly. 
so I had to try again. So I tried more super glue and super glue on top of more super glue and maybe even just a little bit too much super glue kind of led this one to not even cure properly and so that didn't work. And at this point I was running out of ideas so I thought I'd try this dollar store two-part epoxy that I had lying around. So the deal with this two-part epoxy is that it has this syringe, right? Where you try to squeeze out both parts of the epoxy and mix them together but there was a big air bubble in one side, so as I was trying to squeeze out equal parts of the epoxy, mostly just the one came out until I was able to get the tiniest little bit of the other one before the entire gap was full. So I thought I would just kind of work with that and stick it together. It mostly worked, but honestly, a little bit later on, the handle broke off and I had to re-glue it, probably because of this problem. Either way, the handle is glued together. I used the same two-part epoxy to get the pommel on top, and we're fucking done. Once I was done with all of the gluing, I decided it was time to go to bed. When I woke up in the morning, I realized that the hammer would look a little bit better with a glossy top coat on top of it. So I took the hammer out to the balcony, laid out a tarp, and sprayed the whole thing with some clear spray paint. With the glossy coat on top, it looks a lot more metallic, especially next to the matte finish on the rock. The final step was to add this little loop of leather to go on the end of the pommel. All I did was cut out a little section from the wallet, paint the backside brown because it was like a light cream kind of color and that would look no good, and then glue it to the end of the pommel. Yep, definitely glued it right on the first time. No f ups here. Definitely didn't try multiple times or may have it fall apart on me. No siree. Overall, I'm really happy with how this thing turned out. Despite all the difficulty I had trying to get the leather around the handle, the details around the edge actually look a lot more professional than I was expecting considering all the trouble I had. And I'm super happy with the way the text looks. As far as pencil holders go, this works really well and looks really sweet. I'm gonna happily have this sitting on my desk next to my computer monitor for the next little while. And there we have it, our very own 3D printed DIY Thor's Hammer Pencil Holder. If you guys have any suggestions for future episodes of 3DIY, let me know in the comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching this episode of 3DIY. Don't forget to click that like button if you liked it. Click or tap on the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. If you want to support the show and download the models I make here to print for yourself, head over to our Patreon.